Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and this is the traditional reading for Pentecost Sunday. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And this is what it says. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them speaking in our own language to which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongues speaking the mighty deeds of God." And they continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, They're full of sweet wine. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let this be no made known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams, even upon my bond slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour forth my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will grant wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray with me. Lord, you tell us that everyone who calls on your name shall be saved. Not some or might be saved or, or they ought to be saved, but they shall be saved. All who call on your name shall be saved. Lord, this day, may we not hesitate. This day is yours. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Used to be my parents would in, enjoy sitting around reading obituaries out of the newspaper. Nowadays, newspapers are pretty hard to come by. <laughs> but I do go online every once in a while and, and start reading obituaries. Some are places that I lived or some places that are close to where I lived. One of the obituaries I read was out of the, the a Chicago... Uh, Chattanooga newspaper. I used to live in Dalton, and, and a lot of the folks were from that area. So I was reading the newspaper, and, and uh, this was about a, a, 
a woman named Katie McDonald. She was 80 years old, and this was from December of 2019. And of course, like most obituaries, it talked about you know, what a wonderful woman she was, and um, and what a great human being she was. And uh, but you read down the page, and you began to get a, a taste of uh, she might have been just a tad bit eccentric as well. And it was obvious that her children had written the obituary, and one of the paragraphs read like this: She said she was preceded in death by the father of their four children, Charles Allen McDonald, whom she loved to her dying day. And her beloved family pets, Simon the Siamese cat, Peanut the wiener dog, Sugar the howling dog, Daisy the very special, extremely important stray dog, and most notably Jack, her darling mutt, who lost his tail in an unfortunate accident, whereupon mom saved the tail in the freezer, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> you, you never do know when a dog might need his tail again. And, and then it goes on later in the obituary and it says, she left behind a, a load of stuff her family doesn't know what to do with. And then it began to list some of the items. And it said, anyone interested in having these items, please wait the appropriate amount of time to reach out. Tomorrow should be fine. <laughs> well, that's often what happens. Is people sometimes leave behind things that the family doesn't know what to do with. Leaves all kinds of things. The good news for you and me is on the last night of Jesus' earthly life, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I won't leave you with, with, with stuff that you don't know what to do with. I won't leave you empty-handed. I won't leave you without power. He tells his disciples right before he ascended, in, he said, stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. So they stayed in Jerusalem until this day, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was the time where they celebrated the giving of, of the Ten Commandments that had been celebrated for, for, for hundreds of years. That, that the time of the Passover they celebrated when Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Seven weeks later, it was when they received the Ten Commandments, the law of God. And Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, was why people were gathered there in Jerusalem, waiting for the, this feast, where seven weeks after the Passover, they would celebrate the giving of the law. And they were together when they heard a, a noise like a, a violent rushing wind. It says they had tongues as of fire. It didn't say they heard a, a rushing wind. It didn't say that people were touched by fire. It said tongues like as of fire, like fire. And that's when the disciples from, from Galilee began to, to speak, and, and people from around the world began to understand them in their own tongue. And they said, what does this mean? And the cynics spoke up first. They said, well, it means that they're drunk. They started the feast early. They started the party early. That's all it means. And that's when Peter responds with a sermon. And his sermon comes directly from the prophet Joel. 400 years before Christ began to talk about this day. Jesus talked about this day. This day when he wouldn't leave them with, with things they didn't know what to do with. He wouldn't leave them em empty-handed. That he would leave them with power. Power from on high. And Peter goes on to say that the, the power, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power would be poured out. It'd be poured out to sons and daughters Young and old, slave and free, men and women. Well, that, that's different than in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, when, when, when God's Holy Spirit was given, it was given to, to exceptional individuals here and there. Someone who was exceptional in music. Or someone that was exceptional with, uh, craftsman. Or someone that was an exceptional warrior. That it was the Spirit of God that was, on the, that was given to these exceptional people. This says, 
that in the last days, God says, I'll pour forth my spirit on all, on all, all people. You and I have been left with the very best. Power. Power. Not things we don't know what to do with, but with power. The power to see. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 and verse 12. This is what it says. It says, Things which eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which have not entered into the human heart, all that, God has prepared for those who love Him. And then in verse 12, Now we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. And we'll have eyes to see those things that are all around us that have been freely given to us by God. Not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit from God. Walter Cavett tells a story about a boy and his father going camping in the Adirondacks. His father had hired a guide who was familiar with the woods, and they hiked deep into the woods. And and every day, the guide would take the the boy out and and show him things going on under a leaf that, that, or on a tree or on a branch that he hadn't noticed before. And the boy began to use his eyes in different ways to look and see things that he had never seen before. And finally he turned to the guide and he said, Can you see God? The old man responded, My boy, it's getting so I can hardly see anything else. For those who spend a lot of time in nature, you know what I'm talking about. Eyes that they began to see the hand of God in nature all around us. But God didn't give us His Holy Spirit just to see His hand in nature around us. He gave His Holy Spirit that we might see God, the risen Christ, in our neighbor and in ourselves as well. It's a gift that's been given to to you and to me have eyes that see what's not readily apparent in sons and daughters, in the young and the old, in men and women. Eyes to see was given to you and to me. This morning, my invitation is receive the power of the Holy Spirit that's been given to you. Power to see. But not only that, power to pray. Romans 8, 26 says, And in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit and the risen Christ enters into to you and to me to help us pray. Lutheran pastor Reuben Youngdahl tells a story about going to Dublin, Ireland, he saw a young man who had a plaque on his desk. He said, but God. He began to ponder that. Think about what that might mean. And when he got back to the United States, he made a a little plaque for his own desk that said, but God. People would come to his office, and sometimes they would see it and, and not say anything. Other times they would say, but God, what does that mean? And it gave him an opportunity. An opportunity to talk about the strength and the power of God, of His Holy Spirit in prayer. He says, sometimes I'm lonely and I don't know what to pray. So I start and I say, but God, but God is with me. He said, sometimes I'm, I feel insignificant and I don't know what to pray. So I pray, but God, God loves me. And then I know what to pray. So sometimes I don't know what to pray when I feel despair. And I pray, but God. But God gives hope. And I begin to know how to pray. The power of the risen Christ has been given to, to you and me. He didn't leave us as orphans. 
We've been given power. Power to pray. Power. Power to see. You've been given the the power of His Holy Spirit to pray and to see. And this morning my invitation is call on His name and receive that power. Not only that, we've been given the the power of, of peace. The power of peace. Dave Garraway understand was a host of NBC Today show back in the late 50s and the early 60s. I understand that he was probably the most popular host on television at that time, that he had a, a, a lot of respect from his, his peers and also from his audience. And one year he was asked what his understanding of Christmas was. And what he said was, I've noticed that over the years, whenever anyone's asked what they want for Christmas, about nine out of ten people say, mention something material. He said, that used to be amusing to me, but not any longer. He said, I happen to be one of those people who can afford anything he wants, but what I find what I really want, I can't buy at all. I want peace of mind. Peace of mind, peace of soul, the kind of peace you have when you you really don't want anything. On the last night of his earthly life, Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. Peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled nor let them be afraid that you and I have been given peace. The world can't give that kind of peace. It's a kind of peace that comes from the risen Christ who is given to you and me through His Holy Spirit that He might rule in our hearts. It's when we're at war with Christ and we, we, we won't allow Him to rule in our hearts, that's when we become fearful. And we fa- start following the, the rule of, of the world, of the fear, of the worries. But He's given us power. Power of the risen Christ. In your heart and mine, Maybe that this morning when I begin to mention the, He's given us power to see, to see in the, the son or the daughter, in, in the young and the old, in the male and the female. There may be someone in your family, someone that you, you're no longer able to see, what God's doing in their lives, that you've began to, to see them maybe by a, a sentence that you laid on them a long time ago because of something that you're certain they, they did wrong, something that, something that hurt you and hurt you deeply. Jesus Christ has power we don't have to change our vision, power to see, Yes, in nature, but yes, in other people. And power to pray. To pray. To pray in a way that we don't know how to pray. And it may be to pray for that person, but to be led in prayer. That he's given a peace. A peace that surpasses everything that we understand. It's been given to you. My invitation this morning is receive it. Pray with me. Jesus, it was on the last night of your earthly life that you you took a, a loaf of bread and you took a cup. And and you did it so we would remember that your presence, 
doesn't belong on a shelf or a table or a pantry that you you told your disciples then and you tell your disciples today to eat that your spirit might be on the inside of us that your body and your blood might live on the inside of us give us strength that we don't have and Jesus that's the very strength that we need the power of the risen Christ today change our eyes that we might see with an insight that we don't have on our own. Lord, change our prayer, not just the words, but a prayer that aligns our will with yours. Jesus, give us that power for peace. We can't give peace to the world, but Lord, You start your kingdom in the hearts of individuals. And then from that heart, you move into the world. Use us to be men and women, sons and daughters. Peace. Because this world deeply needs your peace. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.